We're back with another video and this time I want to help you speed up your workflow. The little things that will just make animating a little bit more fun but also just help you to get across the finish line faster and smoother. Also quick shout out to Motion Ray for sponsoring this video but more on them later on. The first and maybe the most underutilized trick is to simply create animation presets. Truth is that most of the time we use the same effects over and over again and if you're setting them up manually every single time well you're just costing yourself valuable time. To take this one step further you can even combine it with FX Console which is a free plugin. Anyways, you can also set it up to have hotkeys so you can add your animation presets to a layer with maybe two clicks. The animation presets I have and use all the time are also available on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash my pop. I also now have a Discord, so if you wanna join, you can do that. You don't have to be a paid member of the Patreon to join. You simply have to sign up as a free member at the very least to get access to the Discord. I've also added two new tiers, so if you're interested in some mentoring or just need a little bit more help or sparring, you might want to check those out. Either way, patreon.com forward slash my Paul to check that out. And let's get back to this list. Creating your own asset library is something I can't recommend enough. And I don't mean downloading 300 packs with stuff that you'll never use. I mean, taking the time to curate a small little library of stuff you use all the time. Kind of like this particle texture that I created myself by scanning it, then taking it into After Effects and animating it, export it, and then I'm ready to use it in every single project. And trust me, I use it a lot. So it would suck if I had to animate it every single time I wanted to use it. Now, if you're interested in learning how you can animate your own textures, I'd highly recommend checking out this video, the five best ways of using texture that I've made. Another big part of curating your own asset library is using resources like Motion Array, which also happened to be this video sponsor. I've used Motion Array for finding stock photos, graphics, I've used it for music, sound effects, LUTs, and I've also used it to find really cool effects like this glass cracking thing that I found that I customized just a little bit. But that's not really what I want to talk about today. Motion Array have just introduced ready to use assets, aka drag and drop assets, which is super useful useful because then you don't have to worry about removing backgrounds or doing any adjusting. You simply find what you need, you'll drop it into your timeline, and that's it. You're ready to go. You can find anything from super stylized fonts to some really cool transitions, arrow packs, CTAs, whatever you really need, they've got it ready for you to use. To celebrate that, they've partnered up with Blink My Brain, who is a super talented artist that I've followed for a long time. He has some really cool, wacky character animations is what I would classify him as. But they've partnered up and created some super cool assets as a part of this ready to use asset library that they've now added. You can go in and download the pack and you can not only use it in your projects, but you can also just study it if you want to become a better animator. So if you're looking to build your own little asset library, I highly recommend checking out Motion Array. And if you do so, you can get $50 off when you sign up for the annual subscription using my link in the description. Okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen. I am by no means an expression expert, but I do know just a little bit of the basics and expressions are just a great way of speeding up your workflow and automating a lot of the tedious little animations that would just take forever, frankly, and leave you with way too many keyframes, like randomizing a number or just adding just a little bit of wiggle movements to some of your objects. Now, some of my favorites and super basic ones are like loop out, random, posterize time, which is often used with another expression, and then also wiggle. I'll also make sure to leave some links in the description to some more in-depth breakdowns of how to actually use expressions if that's something you're interested in learning. Listen, I get it. We can't possibly know every single effect in After Effects, but I do highly recommend that you check out most of them, if not all, just so you have an idea of what's available to you. I also highly recommend watching Jake in Motion's series on all the effects because not only does he show everything, but he also gives you some practical examples of how you can apply it to create some really cool animations. And it's not that we need to know the ins and outs of everything, but it can just help you problem solve a little bit quicker. And who knows, you might find a hidden gem that'll inspire your next masterpiece. I wanna end this with a little bit of fun, AKA some layout customization inside of After Effects. Now, I can't tell you exactly how to set up your project just because it'll vary so much depending on your workflow, what type of videos you work with and all that good stuff. And just kind of like how you, like the size screen you have. Like I have a 32 inch monitor, so I have a lot of room to work with. You might be working on something smaller, so you have to think a little bit more about it. But the least I can do is show you my layout and kind of give you some thoughts into why I've picked what I have. This is what my After Effects looks like. As soon as I open it, I created a new project and this is what I have. I'll start with this little tab here because most of the time that's hidden, so I'm just gonna quickly go over it. The only thing I really use this for is Anubis, which is just whenever I need to export a project, I'll always use this just because it's super easy with all the presets that you can set up. I can just start something, I can add an easy V1, all that good stuff. I can make MP4s right from there. So it's just a nice little tool. It is a paid plugin, but it's super nice to work with and I absolutely love 
this thing. I, I could not live without it. Um, I have a, a few other plugins in here, but I legitimately, I never open any of these. So most of the time that just is hidden down there so that I can use it whenever I need to, but it's really just at the end of a project. From there, we have this little setup here, which just comes with a couple of folders already in my project. Again, I do have this on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Paul, where I'll not only give you the file so you can create this template, but I also have a video that shows how you can add that. But just saves me some time so I don't have to worry about creating all that every single time I start a project and it helps me stay organized. From there, I have uh, these others. So I have my effect controls up here. So if I add any effects to a layer, it'll be up there. Then I have flow, which I use a whole bunch. Again, these flow curves available on the Patreon. And last but not least, I have essential graphics as well. Just if I need to add some things or create a MoGut, it's there and it's kind of hidden all the way in the back. So I don't use it too much, but I like having it so I don't have to go in and add it every time. If we go down from there, I actually have a little panel dino here as well where I have Overlord, which I love using if I have anything in Illustrator or if I have something in Figma that I need in After Effects or vice versa, then I use that a whole lot and it's super easy to use and it's just a nice plugin to have. Again, paid. Next up we have Void, which I also use a whole bunch, just a lot easier than using a null. Now this one is free, so I would recommend getting that, but it has a lot of really cool features. You can see here a lot of different hotkeys, but Essentially what I use it for is just creating a basic null with my layer selected. I have this plugin that I don't use anymore, but it's a good way of keeping track of your time if that's something you are working with. Let's say you are on a time contract, so you get paid by the hour, then that's a nice way inside of all the effects they can keep track of your time. But I don't really use that anymore, but it's a good tool to have and I figured I'd share that with you. And I do believe it's free, at least it was when I got it. So below that, I have my timeline. If I create a new composition here, let's just create that. Uh, I do actually want to show one thing that I've sometimes get a few questions and I just want to make sure that I actually talk about this, but you can see I have all this information here, which sometimes is hidden with a little button down here. So what you can do is if you right click up here, you can go into columns and you can select all the things that are important to you, which is just a nice little way. You can also, some people have render time. I don't really care to see that because it's just depressing sometimes when you work with really hefty projects. That's how I get to show my blending modes, my track mats, my parents, and all the motion blur, 3D, all that stuff in one go. And it's super nice because I have such a big screen that I can fit so many things on it. You can also choose to hide some of this, and then that's when you get that little button down here. So I definitely don't wanna do any of that. Then if we go over to the right side, I have a whole bunch of tabs up here, which is, again, stuff I don't use too often. I have the CRT emulator, which is a plugin I've used maybe twice. So then I have the properties tab over here, which I also, I don't really use this. It's cool, but I don't use it much outside if I need to maybe change some things in a text layer when I have that selected or with a shape layer, then it's obviously useful. Then we have Flex, which is a super cool plugin. I've used it for this title card and that's pretty much it. Motion tracker is always nice to have. I do a lot of 3D camera tracking for some simple text effects and that type of stuff, or just tracking like my fingers, which is also a great way that you can use that. So I have that tucked away up there because I use it often enough to where I don't wanna have to go in and actually add it every time. A loss, we have preview, which this one is a nice little trick. So you have your little resolution bar down here in your actual window, which is just when you are paused, this is what the quality will be. So I can set the pause quality to quarter or full. I usually have this at full so I can see what the still frame looks like in full quarter, uh, in full quality. But then I'll often have the resolution dropped over here, which is then the playback resolution. So I can see a still frame in full res, but the playback will be in a lower res so I can get a sense of the flow and how the animation works. That's just how I have that set up. Again, you can change a lot of these settings to kind of work how you want to. If you want it to start over every time that you press space, or if you want it to continue where you kind of stopped. So you can play around with that, but I have that one up there and I go through and I use this resolution thing a whole bunch. Right below that, I have an anchor point mover. And I like this one because it gives me the opportunity to select between inserting keyframes, if I already have something keyframed or modifying the existing keyframes to fit with that new anchor point. But most of the time I just use this before I even start animating because it's just easier. Right next to it, I have my align tool, which is your best friend. Always super good if you're centering stuff or just need to space things evenly. I use this 99.9999999999999% of my projects. And again, most of this stuff you just find, I probably should have mentioned that, up in the window. You can select your different things, extensions, blah, blah, blah. Select kind of what you have and what you don't have. And then once you have that, you wanna go into workspace and then you wanna save that as a workspace so that you can always go back to it. Next up, I have this little panel right below, which I have, I didn't even know libraries was in here cause I never go there. We have motion tools and then we have motion tools, another version. I prefer this one. 
uh, the V2, I guess that, that is, whatever. But it just works the easiest. This one you like have to log into and it just sucks. It's horrible. So get the old version. It has everything I need, which is an anchor point tool, which is pretty much the only thing I use from there, as well as the sequence layers effect. I use, those are the only two features that I use there and they're super good. You can do it in a downwards fashion, an upwards fashion, randomize, and then also bring the layers to the playhead is also a good feature sometime. Below that, I have decomposed text just by itself because I use that a lot. So I want to have that in my screen at all times. And most of the time, I just set it to words and then I pick between the two depending on what type of effect that I'm using. But those are like the main things that I have in my project window. Just pretty much all the things I use all the time and everything that I don't use, I've kind of just gotten rid of because it's a waste of space and it just slows me down. One thing I've gotten a fair few questions about is changing the color of your UI, which is fairly simple to do. So you wanna hit your little shortcut, which is Command and F12, if you're on Mac or this Windows or whatever. And then you, it brings up this little thing and you wanna go search for color. And then you just wanna enable the theme color th the theme colors and then you should be able to go into After effects go into your settings go into appearance and you should be able to set your color so you can change between all these different colors here and for some reason i used to be able to go in and pick the exact color i wanted with the little color wheel thing but uh I don't know, for some reason that doesn't work. I don't know if it's just a me thing. And just like that, you are more primed than ever to go out and finish your work faster and smoother than ever before. So with that being said, I just wanna say thank you for watching. Thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. Again, link in the description if you wanna go ahead and get some of the assets over there. Super useful and super high quality. You can also go up to my patreon.com for just my part if you wanna join the Discord or if you just wanna support or get help and mentoring and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you uh, soon enough. Peace out.